This is Darth Beavis, and we're about to do our tube bending. So first I'll present the tools that we'll be using, and then I'll give you a quick little walkthrough on how we'll do our rigid tubing bending with our Primo Chill tools, and we'll be running off to the races soon. Okay, so the first tool we'll use uh, is our bending board. We'll use this uh, to attach the mandrels to. Uh, we chose a nice white surface. We'll, we can use a dry erase marker, uh, put our sizes down, and mark, erase it, and it'll be nice. We can use it again. Uh, we have a nice 1300 watt heat gun. If you have a 1500 watt heat gun, that'd work as well. You just use it on the medium setting. A nice uh, bending rod. This uh, needs to fit precisely in your tube. You may have to file it down, but you don't want it to be too small, otherwise it will kink up. Uh, we have a nice clear ruler for measuring uh, the distance between fittings. We have our Primochill PETG rigid tube. Uh, if we don't use the mandrels, we can use the uh, Primo Chill Rigid Bender. Uh, this is adjustable, so you can do all different types of angles. Uh, we'll use a screwdriver for attaching the mandrels. A nice pair of gloves so our hands don't get burned. Uh, this tool is cool. This is uh, for cutting the PEDG tubing. Uh, you don't have to file the end of it. It makes a nice, clean cut. Uh, I use an eyeliner pencil for uh, marking uh, the places where I'll be bending. You can also use a grease pencil. A little bit of olive oil for lubrication, uh, a dry erase marker for marking your board, uh, blue shop towels for cleaning things up. And then also we have our drill uh, with a deburring tool attachment. Uh, Peter Brands pointed this out to us, it works really well. We found that when you use the cutter, you don't actually have to use this, but it's a nice backup option. So the next thing we'll do is go over to the case and we'll mark uh, from the center hole to center hole on each fitting and then we'll bend it. Let's see what happens. Now we're measuring between center hole to center hole. And it looks like it's about 293, 294. So we'll do about uh, 290, 294, I think. Yeah, that'll work. So let's go over to our bending table of our GP. U out to res in. And I think we said it was 294. 294, and that's a U-shaped bend. So the first thing we'll do is we'll place our first mandrel. Center of hole, so that would be right about there. Next part is put the bending rod inside of the rigid tube. Use a little bit of olive oil for lubrication. And stick it right in there. Put on some gloves. And you get things out of the way so we can bend without hitting everything else. Of the bend will be moving it back and forth using it on a slow heat so we get a nice even controlled heat distribution we're going to keep going keep testing it to find out when it's flexible like a wet noodle we don't want to overheat because it will slag so we'll just keep going keep testing it so it's nice and flexible and as soon as it's done we'll move it right down to the mandrel and get our first 90 degree bend. It's good to be patient on this part. See, it's becoming flexible a little bit more. There we go, so we'll move it right down to our 90 degree fitting, our angle bender, right over the mandrel. You see it's a nice 90 degree bend. We'll let it cool down for just a moment. We'll mark the area that will need to be heated so it can bend right over the mandrel in a nice clean curve, nice clean 90. And so the first thing we're going to do here is we'll take out this rod, we'll trim this side. There you go. Nice clean cut, a little more lube. Sometimes it's better without the glove on this part so you can get some friction on it. Have to get that bending rod all the way past our bending points. That's the area that we're heating up. When we bend, we'll place it over here and bend it right over that part. Nice, even heat distribution over that entire area, which should produce a nice, clean bend. Since we use an eyeliner pencil or a grease pencil, we can clean up those black marks and the tube will be nice and clean. 
If you're patient, you'll have a lot better result than if you rush this. Make sure we have even heat distribution over the entire area so we have a nice, clean, smooth bend. We don't want it to kink on us. There we go. Looks like we're good, so we'll just slide it over here, bend it over the second mandrel. And we'll be trimming these ends, so it doesn't have to be the perfect size at this point. The main thing is to have a good 90 degree bend on each side. There we go. Clean that up a little bit so we don't make a mess over on our system that we're building. Especially with the grease pencil, you want to be careful if you have white sleeving because you will stain it and it is extremely hard to clean up when you get it on the sleeving itself. Okay, so now we have our 90 and all we are dual 90s and all we have to do is go over and uh, put, position it over the uh, two fittings and trim it until it's the right size and we should be good to go. Now we're going to show our U face while we get this puppy fitted and we only have about 10,000 more bends to go until we're done with this project. I can't wait. Uh, we might rebend this one, we'll see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make that one a little bit shorter, but at least I have it the right size, and I know that I need to bend it a little bit closer, so I'll just make a slight adjustment in my mandrels and it'll be perfect. So, this shows you that it doesn't work out perfect every time, but be flexible and don't be afraid to redo a piece because you want to be right. You're making a masterpiece, you're making a work of art. No. Mona Lisa didn't come out right the first time, or did she? I don't know. But just think if you would have redone it, you could have given her even like a big smile with some bling bling. Okay, so we recut and rebent another piece, so let's see if it fits. Ah, that's nice, perfect. So now we'll put our fittings on. Uh, these are uh, premature rigid compression fitting. So you first put on the cap, you put on your O-face and then the O-ring on the other side. Uh, this one has a uh, slight bevel because I use my drill tool. This one wouldn't fit, but it's already nice and clean, so I didn't really worry about it. Pop that in both sides. The first one we'll attach is the one with the, the shorter run on it so we can Get it in there and make sure that it goes on nice and straight. And because we're using O-rings, uh, if we bend uh, slightly or even quite a bit, you'll still have a nice watertight seal. Get it finger tight just so the O-ring compresses. Double check the other one. And before we do our leak test, we'll double check every fitting to make sure it's completely tightened. Because I've seen before where uh, people have forgotten to do that and it can make it rain. And we don't want it to rain. There we go. First one installed. Looks beautiful. <laughs>